Hi guys, so welcome to another beer review and uh, today we've got quite an interesting one, I'm pretty sure of it. And we're going over to, apologies for my terrible, terrible pronunciation, uh, a brewery de Brandebeere. Probably completely mispronounced that, I do apologise to anybody uh, from Belgium watching this beer review and um, yeah this is a bottle of the Petrus Nitro Quad Belgian Ale clocking in at 11.5% ABV so it's going to be a nightcap well I'm going to play a bit of Skyrim before I go to bed and uh, yeah so a Nitro Quad Oh my word, um, this is brewed uh, primarily for the American market, um, got a lot of American sort of distribution stuff on the back, and um, yeah, 11.5%, I am Brewery de Braben de Beira, I'm not too sure yet, but those guys are out of Belgium, and uh, yeah, I'm sure people who know a lot more than I do are absolutely cringing right now so i do apologize but um yeah <laughs> the idea of a, a nitro quad just sounds amazing to me but uh, yeah cool looking artwork uh 333 330 milliliter bottle i should say and yeah surgeon general warning best before date is the 17th of october 2019 Turn bottle upside down and pour hard into the middle of the glass. So I've got a slightly bigger glass uh, than I should be drinking from. Because how are you supposed to drink that from like an authentic glass? Because the head's just going to go crazy as it lifts up and go everywhere. Or maybe that's part of the spectacle. I don't know. But uh, yeah, pick this up from Northern Beer Temple upon recommendation from John. A uh, great guy and he said this will blow my mind. Not too well versed in uh, Belgian beers in general. So why not go completely left field and try a Nitro Quad? Sounds like a good idea, Peter. Anyway, let's see what we get. Wonderful crown on this bottle as well. So, give that an open. Using my big glass. So let's do this. Uh, shit. It's even almost too much for that. And yes, I poured it all over my leg. That looks pretty damn stupid. But look at that. It's like stained my skin. But uh, yeah, lovely uh, cascade in there. I, I literally panicked when I poured that beer then. That's why I poured it like a complete idiot. But uh, beer in the glass then. I mean, you can smell it from here. That's a strong smelling beer. Um, that isn't really jet black, but it's got a really dark, intense sort of like oaky look to it with about three fingers worth of a lovely creamy sort of khaki looking head and well I definitely you can't wear that hoodie tomorrow to work oh well and uh, yeah I'll just mop it up with my t-shirt because I'm going to bed soon anyway uh, felt a little on the floor yeah that is actually stained my leg fantastic it's almost like fake tan um, but then again I do have the complexion of Casper the friendly ghost so Oh well, but uh, yeah, it looks absolutely wonderful, doesn't it? Oof, that's a potent taste of smelling beer. Almost uh, regretting doing this when I'm in work tomorrow at nine, but um, loads of coffee in this. Like a loads of like earthy coffee. Not too much hop character, more earthy. Subtle sweet brown sugar, vanilla -y tones. I mean, it's not the most uh, aromatic of beers, and it's not really in your face or anything like that. Uh, nor would you really expect it to be, to be honest. But um, that being said, really robust. Loads of dark berries. Loads of, like, caramelised sugar. A little bit of char in there as well. It smells rather robust. So uh, let's see what we get on the taste. Cheers. Where's that 11.5 ABV? That is 
smoother than a baby's ass. That's just gone straight down. The aftertaste is where you get more of the sort of like booziness. I'm getting quite a bit of brandy uh, on the flavour now. Yeah, but that's like, it was creamy, but it was so light at the same time. This is one that you could get yourself into a hell of a lot of trouble <coughs> with this sort of beer. Let's have another taste. I don't want to drink too much because I could take really big gulps of this because the ABV is massed so ridiculously. There's no harshness on the intake. No really like residual booziness. Loads of sweetness. Like that sort of like grounded sweetness like brown sugar, a little bit of cocoa, molasses. Like cherries, berries, black currants all like in a big sludgy mess. But a good sludgy mess. Big vanilla as it's going in. Slight balsamic tartness halfway through. Yeah, this is um, it's a dangerous beer, man. That is an absolutely dangerous beer, which is both a, a blessing but a curse. Because if you were to be presented this, you would get in yourself into a lot of trouble. You'd be banned from Belgium. Um, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure of it. That's really quite remarkable. Not going to lie, not completely my thing. There are some subtle flavours in there which don't really suit my palate as it stands now. Yeah, but you get chocolate sweetness, caramel sweetness, loads of fruity sweetness, sweet brandy-like character, big earthy barrel notes in there as well, subtle char, a little bit of a bit of coffee. It's just smooth as silk, though, and so remarkably light at the same time. Not had too many, like, standard quads or anything like that to be honest so i don't really have a great uh point of reference and uh yeah i need to literally wash that leg because it looks like i've i've got like some rare disease or something i'm not showing you my leg on camera um there's a another channel for that uh if you look on p hub won't say it because not gonna degrade this review of what is really quite an exceptional beer There's also like a fortified wine character in there. And when I was saying coffee, it's not like a brewed coffee. It's like coffee bean, like green coffee bean sort of flavour. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to take any more sips of that. And that is going to last me literally until I fall asleep because I do not, I could just, you could almost down that thanks to that smooth nitro. It's incredible. It really, really is. It's really thrown me. Um, and you going into it, it might not be like flavour-wise, like beer of the year for me because I'm just not, not only not too well versed in Belgian beers, but there are some flavours in Belgian beers that I've had, no matter what the style, that just don't really sit right with me, like the yeast character. But this has got big earthy hop notes. I'd say it's not hoppy. But it's got a big earthy hop note. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know what? I picked I paid about three or four quid for this um, from Northern Beer Temple. Any homeless people uh, using McDonald's Wi-Fi watching this review? Save yourself money buying four bottles of your shitty turbo cider, which will literally rot your insides as soon as it settles in your stomach get yourself save up a little bit get yourself a couple of bottles of that and you're going to be on your way you're going to be 
on a rocket to the moon, seriously. How can something like that, so full of character, high ABV, so robust, be so smooth and drinkable? A bad Imperial Stouts, which I've said are so smooth and like chocolate milk, that are not anywhere near as smooth or as light as that. But it's not light in a weak sense. It's not light in a sort of poor, oh, it's a bit too thin sense. Do you know what I mean? It's just, wow. And I could imagine this is a beergasm for a lot of drinkers. For me, definitely uh, an, in an intriguing beer experience. That's for damn sure. The nitro just works with those flavours that are in there. And um, yeah, so if you love your Belgian ales, you love your nitro beers. I know Rob, uh, Rod from Rod J Beer Ventures is a massive Belgian beer fan. And I know Paul um, is a fan as well. Well, I know he mentioned something about this beer or the brewery. Uh, if you guys are watching this, try and source yourself a bowl of that because that's fantastic. Uh, that being said, it might break away too much from the traditions uh, as it has been brewed for the like, more contemporary sort of American market. But it's still got those like classic historical flavours in there. And um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. But I've got a feeling I'm going to regret it as well. So um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be fun. Because I don't, I, I don't handle alcohol well, well, well at all. So uh, yeah, my review for the Petrus Nitro Quad Belgian Ale. 11.5%. Perfect nightcap. Um, I think that's going to help me sleep for damn sure. I'm going to give that an 8.5 out of 10. Um, maybe after trying a few more Belgian beers, although I've, I've been doing, making a conscientious effort to pick up more in my recent beer hauls, if I was to revisit that or compare it to like a really highly regarded, like this is the ultimate quad of all quads, and put them side by side, um, I might enjoy it more. I might say, oh, actually, it goes. I'm just putting out there that this is an imperfect review uh, for many reasons but I'm just being honest and uh, it's a wonderful beer a wonderful drinking experience a really intriguing icebreaker conversation piece and a beer that would be really interesting to uh, get a few of your mates around get a few bottles and just enjoy the what's the word the event of a nitro quad nitro quad this sounds ridiculous and it bloody is, but in a good way. So, of course, if you've tried this beer, or any others from the brewery, or any other sort of nitro versions of classic styles, recommendations, opinions down below. Um, are you a fan of the brewery? That sort of thing. Um, if any of my friends at Phil Beer Shooters have reviewed this one, their link's going to be included down below as well. Check out the brewery. Check out More Than Beer Temple. And uh, more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. So thank you all for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers. Bye.